The V8 Vantage proves to be a real beauty among today's angular car designs. It is then also no surprise that many petrol heads have this car higher on their list or used to own one. It's relatively affordable, great to look at and sounds amazing compared to modern cars. But the V8 Vantage market changed drastically during the last two years. Some cars followed the market trend and increased a lot in value, while others did not move or even continue to depreciate. In this video I will show you all the ins and outs of the market, such as the price levels, the price development over time and the depreciation per 1000 miles driven. Now since the V8 Vantage didn't appear on the channel for a while, we will spend a little bit more time on familiarizing ourselves with the market compared to the Porsche videos that featured lately. So let's start. Over here we have the US market of August split by engine type. We have of course the 4.3 liter, the 4.7 liter and the 4 liter. In total there are 275 cars for sale, but the market is dominated by the 4 liter. They account for 70% of the market supply. It is perhaps also the most controversial model. The design is not liked by everyone and personally I think it is extremely spec dependent. Besides the design, the car is also heavily criticized for its interior and especially the entertainment system. That old Mercedes system simply does not belong in a car like this. However, it's not all bad. If I need to believe people who know something about car dynamics, the driving sensation is on point. Nevertheless, the real problem is its price. It's expensive, and if you look at the graph, the market might think it's too expensive. New or almost new cars go for around $180,000, while cars that are 2 or 3 years old are floating around the $130,000 mark. And that's a drop of $50,000. And these things are not visible in let's say the 911 market. On the positive side though, this means that the cars are becoming more affordable at a rapid pace. The cheapest models are now even priced at the market top of the 4.7 liter market. But with a median price of $75,000, those cars are still considerably more affordable. So, we still see that the older cars are more affordable than the newer ones. And this is an indication that the cars could lose some value if you parked it in a garage and would not drive it. We cannot say the same about the 4.3 liter market. There's no price difference anymore between the model years and this means that the role of the spec, the car's condition and its maintenance history is relatively large in the price setting. With a median price of $55,000, prices are on par with the oldest 4.7 liters. Now the market can of course be categorized in various ways. If I add the model type to the split, we can see that the 4 liter market consists out of only one model, but that we have the base, N420, S, GT and GTS models in the 4.7 liter market. The 4 liter market consists out of the base and the AMR models. In reality the cars underwent even more updates throughout the years, but there are specialized websites which can tell you how the car improves by every model year. Now looking at these model types, we can see that some are extremely rare. There are a handful of N420s, S's and GTS's for sale. I will therefore not apply this split to all of the numbers that we will cover. With so few examples for sale, the numbers are not reliable. So we spent now quite some time to talk about the market and the different price levels. But let's step it up a notch and talk about the value development. In general, the development over time is affected by the depreciation per year, the depreciation per thousand miles and in some cases by market fluctuations. The latter one can shift the curves up or down. But let's first have a look at the static market picture, the one for the mileage sensitivity. Over here we have the mileage on the horizontal axis and the price on the vertical axis. This graph shows pretty much what we could have expected. The new 4 liter has an extremely high mileage sensitivity. You lose around 1.6% of the car's value per thousand miles driven or around $2.2,000 on average. And this is quite a high number, even for a car at this price range. The 4.3 and 4.7 liter score a lot better with a loss of 0.6% per thousand miles driven. Yet, although these numbers are fairly low, they are not as low as they are in the 911 market. Those hover somewhere between 0.3 and 0.4%. So what about those market fluctuations then? Well, prices of course sort in the complete market and this also applies to the VS Vantage market. Likewise though, the market has been cooling off lately and also this is reflected in the price trends for the V8 Vantages. But before we have a look at that, if you enjoy this video, please support the channel by clicking on the like button down below. Thank you. Over here we have the price trends for the 4.3, 4.7 and 4 liter market. And, as you can see, there are quite some differences between them. 4.3 liters increased while 4.7 and 4 liters decreased. Let's cover each one of these segments separately. We start with the 4.3 liter and then work our way up to the 4 liter. We can see now that prices increased by 10% during the last 10 months 
and that they are up by 31% compared to the end of 2019. And this is not a bad result, but the latest price increase is a little bit of an exaggeration. There are namely some peculiar developments in this market that we need to take into account. The market is truly becoming a collectible car market. We can see this first of all when we look at the market characteristics. Supply is way down from the 44 cars that were for sale at the end of 2019. 4.3 liters are becoming increasingly rare. Another interesting development we can see in the mileage graph. The median mileage has been decreasing and this generally means that the quality of the cars that are for sale is increasing. And this is a market dynamic that you typically see when cars are turning into collectibles. So it's not just this decrease in the median mileage that is responsible for the price increase. Also when we track cars with the same mileage over time, we can see that prices went up. A quick look at the price development per mileage bucket reveals that the cars up to 28,000 miles saw a larger price increase than the cars that have a higher mileage. If you watch some of my previous videos, then you recognize this trend. This is namely also what is happening in the Ferrari 360 and the Boxster 986 market. All of these cars are slowly turning into collectibles. Of course, these price trends tend to fluctuate a bit more than the aggregate trend, so we need to be a bit cautious with interpreting it. For the orange line we have only one strong increase. For the blue line, however, we have several data points. Alright, so what about the market for the 4.7 liter? Can we see the same over there? Well, not really. Starting with the aggregate trend, we can see that prices decreased by 6% during the last 3 months. Moreover, this applies to all cars including the low mileage examples. And hereby the trend is more in line with the market trend and contrasts with the increase in the 4.3 liter market. Yet, compared to December 2019, prices are still up by 23%. This is less than the 31% in the 4.3 liter market, but not a bad result at all. Looking at the market characteristics, we can see that it differs from the 4.3 liter market. Supply is indeed a lot lower than it used to be, but it was stable during the last 3 months. The median mileage developed slightly upwards, and also this is different to what we observed in the 4.3 liter market. So to sum it up, the 4.7 liter market seems to follow the market trend, and this means that prices are flattening or even decreasing. At this moment there is no indication that the market is turning into a collectible car market. And with that it's time to have a look at the last market segment, the one for the 4 liter. Over here we have the price change during the last 3 months. I only recently started to track these prices, so unfortunately I do not have a long price trend available. But I will continue to track the prices from now onwards, so click on the subscribe button if you want to stay up to date on the 4 liter Vantage prices. Now looking at this short term change, we can see that prices came down by 2.2% and this price drop is statistically confirmed and this means that it is unlikely to be the result of chance. When I looked a little bit deeper into this data, it became evident that this is correct. Prices decrease for cars from all model years and mileages, and I think it is fair to expect that these cars will follow the market trend, if not decrease more than the trend. So we covered now the V-Advantage market, but as always with these type of analysis, you can split the data in various ways, depending on your interest. So I asked you on my Instagram and on YouTube what you would like to know about the market. The most common question by far was about the value differences between the automatics and the manuals. Did values develop differently? The short answer is yes, but there is a caveat. Over here we have the price trends for the 4.3 and 4.7 liter market split by transmission type. It is a bit messy due to the wide confidence intervals. Some of you already pointed this out in the comment section and I will implement a functionality that will allow me to remove these intervals. Anyways. Looking at the difference between the transmission types, we can see that the manual and auto prices in the 4.3 liter market were at the same level at the end of 2019, whereas the manual is clearly more expensive now. In the 4.7 liter market, we can see that the manuals increased less than the automatics. Both trends are however a bit deceiving. I looked deeper into the data and found that prices increased indeed slightly more for the low mileage manuals. And this applies to both markets, but the difference is much smaller than I expected. For the other cars there's not really a significant difference. When it comes to the 4.3 liter market, the price increase is to a large extent driven by a mileage decrease that is larger in the manual than in the automatic market. In the 4.7 liter market, we need to take into account that at this detailed level, the price trend is heavily influenced by the market composition. 
Unfortunately, there's not enough data to look at the transmission splits for the GT or S models. The same also applies to the 4 liter market. There are too few manuals for sale to get a reliable price trend. Now besides the difference between the transmission types, a few of you also asked about the difference between the coupes and the convertibles. But based on the little data that we have, we can say that there is no significant difference between these roof types. Someone commented that convertibles are not selling, and this of course might be the case. I don't have any data on the time to sell available for the V8 Vantage, but it might be interesting to look into in the future. Then there were also some questions about mechanical problems and things to look out for when you're buying a V8 Vantage. But to be honest, I cannot provide you with any information that you cannot find with a 5 minute Google search, so I recommend that you check out some other sources. Nevertheless, I think it's well known that you should not buy these cars with your last money. Things can go wrong and they can be expensive to fix. Now finally, some of you asked the price trends for the special models. Again, this is a bit tricky because the market is so small. Over here we have the price trends for the 4.7 liter GTS, GT, S, N420 and base models. We cannot read too much into each and every price fluctuation, but I think it is fair to conclude that in the grand scheme of things, prices move in parallel. You can see here that base prices increased during the last 3 months, while others flattened or decreased. But this increase over here is mainly driven by a mileage decrease and a model year increase. And with that it's time to wrap up and conclude. Like many other markets, the V8 Vantage market is at a fascinating point. We saw that the oldest cars, so the 4.3 liters are moving towards collectible cars, whereas the 4.7 and especially the 4 liters are more influenced by the market trend. Looking at the value development, I think it is fair to conclude that the 4 liter has the largest downside risk. That's no surprise, it is the newest car and we saw in the beginning of the video that price drops can be large. 4.7 liter prices started to decrease, and I think if you are buying one right now, you should factor in the possibility of further price decreases. But that goes for many cars at the moment. 4 liter prices could be slightly more stable for reasons we discussed earlier. And with that we arrived at the end of this video. Now as always, if you enjoy this data driven way of analyzing car markets, but would like to see the analysis for a different car, let me know the name of the car for which you would like to see an analysis by commenting it down below in the comment section. Once there are enough requests for a certain car, I will make a video about it. Don't forget then to subscribe and to click on the notification bell so you get notified when your requested analysis goes live. As always, thank you for watching and I hope to see you next week for a new video.